Let us pray. Lord, as your scriptures are read and proclaimed this day, we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that our hearts, our minds, and our very lives may be transformed by your Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. So now that we've entered into the month of October, one of my favorite months of the year, the weather is nice, and we have one of the most popular holidays of the year, Halloween. It, it, it really is for a lot of people. Do any of you have those giant skeletons that are so popular this year? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I priced one of those. Those are not cheap. Plus the fact you got to be a little careful because if you go overboard with Christmas, your neighbors just kind of pat you on the back. If you go overboard with Halloween, your neighbors call the cops. So you got to be a little bit careful with that. But over the uh, next few weeks, uh, since this is kind of a spooky month, if you will, we're going to be having some uh, sermons uh, based around some, some spooky themes, if you will. And today, our theme is going to be, well, you guessed it, aliens. Now, some of us live with aliens, right? Right? Uh, Yes. Um, uh, when I was a kid, uh, every once in a while, you would hear about uh, aliens in the news, uh, you know, resident aliens and, and such. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I was convinced they were talking about space aliens. I had no idea they were talking about people from Canada. <laughs> but I personally have never seen a space alien, uh, although I did get kind of spooked once. This would have been about 20 years ago. Lived in a little farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. It was by a town called Middle Point. And, and Middle Point was called Middle Point because it was halfway between Van Wert, where my church was, and another little town called Delphus, which is Terry. Uh, and uh, have any of you ever been to Van Wert, Ohio? Do you go through there all the time? Got to tell you, when I got appointed up there, uh, I was, uh, it was my first appointment. I was there uh, uh, in seminary. The district superintendent called and said how uh, the bishop would like this to send you to a church in uh, Van Wert. How do you feel about that? And I said, I have always wanted to go there. <laughs> and then after I hung up the phone, I got a map because th this was back in the days before you could just, I didn't have a phone, right? They didn't have phones back then. Uh, and... Uh, Looked up uh, to find out where I was going, and I was surprised that it's a whole county. Never even heard of the county, never heard of the city, and I had lived in Ohio my whole life. I guess I just didn't get out much. So, I'm, I'm, I'm in this house. Uh, it is uh, a, a nice fall day, uh, and I'm getting ready to go to bed. We're the only house, we're this old farmhouse, on, we're the only house on this road between two fields up there in what I lovingly refer to as the frozen tundra of Ohio, right? We lived right off of, of Ridge Road, and it was called Ridge Road because, and Terry, you'll back me up on this, it is about this high, yeah, and, and, and until they built the water uh, retention pond for Van Wert, it was the highest point in the county, right? This is flat, flat part of Ohio, and it's about 10 o'clock at night. And I'm standing there at the sink, and I'm getting a drink of water. The lights are off. And I remember turning around, getting ready to go up the steps, when a bright light shines in the kitchen window. I mean, it was bright. Lit up the whole downstairs. I turn around and just see this bright light shining in my window. And that window, it didn't overlook a road. It overlooked the side yard. And I knew immediately what this meant. I had seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind. <laughs> I was just waiting for the doors to start shaking and all that stuff. And I did what any good young pastor would do. 
and went to the bathroom and shut the door. I finally looked to see what was going on. And to make a long story short, it turned out it was my landlord's mom and dad. They had come over to get water out of the cistern at 10 o'clock at night. Why this was a good time to do this, I don't know. Maybe it was when they discovered their well was dry. And they were out there trying to pump. So here I am now at like 11 o'clock at night helping these uh, two older folks pump water out of the cistern. <sighs> Happy that I wasn't on my way to Alpha Centauri. So I wasn't visited by space aliens that night, but what would have happened if I was? Have you ever thought about that? Actually, I should ask you, has anyone seen a space alien, by the way? Okay, just always wanted to ask that. Um, I, I personally have never seen a space alien, although um, I did once uh, go to a, a MUFON meeting, the, the UFO people from TV, they had a, a, a meeting uh, at a local library. Uh, I think it was up in Westerville. And uh, the, it was like their monthly meeting. And my brother, for some reason, had gone to one. I don't know, he saw it somewhere on the internet. And he goes, you got to go with me, dude. It is hysterically fun. I said, Okay, so we went there. There's about 60 people crammed in this little room uh, there at the Westerville Library. And uh, 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 the, the, the people from the organization were talking about all these UFO sightings they had, that they had been told and the mundane things they were about how the, this woman got really angry down by Chillicothe when they told her her UFO experience was just life flight. Apparently, that is not what they want. she wanted them to say, and she refused to accept that answer, no matter what proof they had that that's what it was. Um, and so it was pretty, it was interesting, you know, how, how they, they, they found, you know, the, what the stars people were seeing and misrepresenting all this. And so they get to the end uh, of the presentation, and it, it was okay. It was, you know, a way to pass Saturday afternoon. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the guy that was running the meeting made this fatal mistake. He goes, does anybody have any stories they want to share? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so and we're kind of crammed in there. And so my brother's sitting here, and there's some other guy sitting here. And I want to say my dad was with us. And uh, um, we're all sitting there, and this guy raised his hand. And he goes, yeah. And he starts talking about seeing these lights over top of Lake Erie. And the, the guy from MUFON was like, oh, okay, well, you know, when do you see them and all this? And then the, as the story progressed, it got weirder. And he, they go, so when do you see them? Oh, whenever I telepathically call them in. <laughs> and the guy that's running the meeting, you can see his face drop. And he goes, oh. And my brother's sitting next to me. And he, he leans over and he goes, Ozzy has just entered the building. I go, what? He goes, the crazy trade is here. <laughs> I'm glad some of you at least got the reference. Um, and uh, um, uh, it, it, it was interesting, and, and, and he was convinced that, that he could telepathically communicate with space aliens. Who am I to say that that couldn't happen? But what would happen if space aliens really did land in your backyard. You ever thought about that? Well, if you saw space aliens in your backyard, the first thing, at least for me, is I would know that no matter what they looked like, if they looked like the cute little one on my shirt, or if they are, uh, uh, you know, got tentacles or, or, or whatever they looked like, they would have be beings that were created by God. Because see, the Bible tells us that everything we can see, including the stars in the sky, were created by God. So they would be beings created by God. And that means God would care about them. And I think I side with C.S. Lewis on the idea that if space aliens landed 
today, this afternoon, that it wouldn't be the end of society. It wouldn't be the, even the end of religion, as many people say. Because God has created everything. And it would just be an addition to the wonderful creation that we already know. In his uh, uh, essay, Religion and Rocketry, C.S. Lewis wrote that, that finding life on another planet, or if the life came here, it, it, it would probably just strengthen existing beliefs for most people. He cited examples of Copernican astronomy, Darwinism, and, and modern psychology, and, and how none of that has destroyed faith. Lewis wrote, When the hubbub has subsided, both sides find themselves where they were before. In other words, if you already believed in God, you would still believe in God, and these aliens would just be uh, 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 increasing your faith. And if you didn't believe, these aliens would just uh, uh, enforce your non-belief in God. But there is something I know that the aliens would need, and that is they would need to hear about Christ. So how would you share Christ with an alien? Now, as my dad would say, very carefully. <laughs> but how would you? Well, the first thing is, I think you would be friendly. Now, they might be quite different from us. I was listening to a podcast this week where they were discussing people who claim to have seen uh, different types of aliens, and you would be surprised at what people report to the police. Or maybe you're not surprised what people report to the police. People have said they have seen aliens that were short, that were tall, uh, that were green, that were blue. My favorite are, are the aliens that uh, were sitting in a UFO. I believe this happened in the 60s. The guy uh, was a farmer. He knocked on the side of the UFO. They opened the door, and they gave him some pancakes. Google it. It's a real story. Aliens giving a guy pancakes. I hope... That, that if aliens stand in my backyard, not only do they make pancakes, but they also do bacon. And that would explain, you know, the missing pigs and stuff, wouldn't it? See? They might be quite different from us, but the important thing we would need to do is not to focus on the differences, but to focus on the similarities. Because, my friends, there are more things that are similar between God's creations than are different. And if both us and the, the alien you're talking to, the person who is different than you, are loved by God, we have something very important in common. Something we should respect. Because God loves them. What else could we do? We need to share the good news with them. Too often, I think, we Christians want to share, well, not necessarily the good news of Jesus Christ. We want to share maybe the scary news of Jesus Christ. We want to tell people about Jesus, but in a way that is frightening or is condemning. Or we want to share the guilty news of Jesus, you know, making people uh, uh, feel guilty if they don't come to Jesus. Or, or even worse, we share the hateful news of Jesus, where, where we tell people that Jesus doesn't like certain people or maybe even them if they don't change certain things. We, as Christians, are to share the good news. That is, is that all people are loved by Jesus and welcomed by Jesus. That's the good news. It's good news for each and every one of us, for all of God's creation. Jesus loves us. He died for us on the cross so that we may have Everlasting life with him if we only believe. And we would need to invite them to be a part of our Christian community. 
My friends, if an alien lands in your backyard, I am sure Terry would take them in the choir. Even if, you know, they had two mouths or something, right? They, they could do the bass and the, 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 the tenor part at the same time or whatever. It would be awesome. So why is it important to invite someone to church? Well, because they will more than likely come if you invite them. Did you know that most people who start attending a church come because somebody invited them? Not because of marketing, not because of a cool website, not because of a fancy sign. Now, these things don't, don't I'm not saying you don't need them, but what I'm saying is, is that the number one reason people start attending a church is because somebody invited them. And the number one reason people stay after you invite them is because you were nice to them. Did I ever tell you about the time I invited somebody to a church and they accidentally sat in somebody's seat? Have you ever accidentally sat in somebody's seat? Now, in this particular church, there were 25 people in a sanctuary that was built for 300. There were plenty of empty seats, except this person happened to sit in the one seat that somebody sat in. And they got asked to move. And that person wouldn't have come back if they weren't related to me. My friends, inviting somebody who is different from you to church will challenge you and refresh your heart. It will. And it will also make you see your church in a whole new light. And you can then share what they observe. Because it's amazing when you invite somebody who hasn't been to your church before and they come and they tell you the experience and you look at them and you go, uh-uh. Oh, people get angry. I remember once we were doing a, a, a church growth uh, project and our uh, district had sent uh, church, uh, I called them spies, they didn't appreciate that term, but uh, uh, the, uh, secret worshipers down to, uh, uh, to, to, to visit us, to give us a report. And when we got the report back, people got really angry. We don't do that. And my answer to them was, yes, we do. We do not form clicks and not talk to anybody else. Yes, you do. <laughs> my friends, you, you might be thinking, but Pastor Rick, this is all great to know in case a space alien comes and lands in my backyard. But the chances of that happening today is not very high. And I'd say to you, I would agree with you. However, there are lots of people right here in our area who also need to hear about the good news of Jesus Christ. And they may not be from Alpha Centauri. They may just be from, you know, Columbus or, heaven forbid, Lockburn. <laughs> but they count just as well, and they need Jesus just as much as a space alien would. I looked up the, the statistics this week. 29% of the people in a uh, three-mile radius of our church have no faith connection of any kind right now. 29%, which is actually kind of low for an area. We actually are kind of a religious area compared to, to other areas in, in central Ohio. My friends, know this. There are people who need to hear about Jesus Christ in your family, in your neighborhood, at work. Share Jesus with them because it is the best gift you can give somebody. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for coming and for dying for us 
on the cross, and then, then for your glorious resurrection that gives us the hope of everlasting life. Lord, your story is a story worth telling, and we pray that you'll help us to tell that story to those who need to hear it, because we know that we are here because somebody cared enough about us to share your story with us. So Lord, help us to pass that along. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen.